2 Thessalonians chapter 2, please. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then we're going to read about the signs of his coming. So we're going to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. So we'll start off with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. So as we start off the passage over here, it's going to give two signs concerning how close we are to the second advent. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as at the day of Christ is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay, so there are two important signs that, that we notice over here on the closeness of the second advent. The second advent. And it's going to be based off of two signs right here. And we're seeing this already occurring. It's like building up more and more and more. The first one is the falling away. So you look at, you observe churches. And as you observe churches, they should be falling away. If they keep talking about revival, revival, worldwide revival, then it shows that we're not that close to the rapture. However, if we see the greater majority of churches falling into apostasy and to sin, then we know that we're getting closer to the second advent. And we know that for a fact. We know that for a fact because we see so much falling away. Not only that, the Antichrist. By observing these things, we can tell how close we are to the tribulation and the end times. So that's why when you look at current events today, it should excite you on how close we are to the rapture. A lot of people, they talk about revelation, the rapture, the tribulation, the Antichrist. But they don't realize how very close we are. They, don't, they are not aware, and it's like they have a veil covering their face, and they're just going by the machine of this world, everyday life. So we need to see what's going on around us. If we were to see more of the world around us, then we'd wake up and say, hey, I better get to work for Jesus Christ. And we'd be more aware of the devil's tactics out there, what he's trying to do to hurt our church. And he can even attack in the teaching and the preaching right, right. now. To hurt people and get them away from what he wants to speak to them. Yeah. So it's always have to be an on guard situation. But unfortunately, we live in a day and age that everything's normal. That we're going to breathe the next five seconds. But we should always be on our toes on what Satan's going to do Amen. to attempt to attack us, this church, and your life for people watching online. Okay, so... By observing these two things, what can we see in our world that we're very close? There's no doubt. It is very close. It is extremely close. The falling away, right? So then look at the churches. And yes, this green thing gave up the ghost right here. So we're going to get rid of this guy. Okay, so then the first thing is the falling away. So let's observe the churches. As we observe the churches, we can see more and more that we're falling away. How so? Because one of the biggest movements within neo-evangelical churches, which is famous for its mega churches, the neo-evangelical churches consist of the worldliness. When the church combines with the world, then you know that we're in trouble. You know that we're in trouble. Is that when the church combines with the world... As the world combines more and more with the church, then you see more and more how we're falling away. You see contemporary Christian music. And then you also see the, the dressing over there that's becoming more and more worldly. Then you see that now that it affects their appearance and their music, it's going to creep into the preaching. That's right. So now the preaching becomes worldly. So then some pastor has to take out some sort of squirt gun squirt on his members so that this can so that the people can pay attention and that it's more entertaining as a church service i kid you not you can see those kind of things they feel like that they have to preach uh they have to start off with humor like joel osteen does to get the members attention they have to preach in a way where they don't uh, yell 
but that they have to speak in a nice, soft, soothing voice. That way they can enjoy the preaching. This has become now more of the world's way, the world's way of preaching. Preachers do not have an old-fashioned pulpit. They have a little glass, skinny little, I don't know what you call it. I, I, I hesitate to call it pulpit. And then they will have these Hawaiian T-shirts on, on and then baby. blue jeans, and ripped on. jeans. God help if you're a pastor wearing skinny ripped jeans. We don't want to see that. And then they start to preach because they're becoming more like the world. So then, does that mean now, see that, that falling away? That means we're really close. So it should excite you. Now, because they've gotten more and more into the world, they condone homosexuality now. So then Rick Warren, he hangs out with the homosexuals. Even though he claims that he disagrees and is against homosexuality. Joel Osteen attends a, a concert that supports gay pride, etc. Even though Joel Osteen claims that he's against homosexuality. So we see right here how it's going to uh, deteriorate and combine more and more. It's combining. Get ready. It's falling apart. Homosex the, one of the biggest falling away signs is that you see homosexuals filling up the pews in the churches. Then you know we're in trouble. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, what we do believe in is that if a homosexual were to walk in over here, we give them a chance. We want to get them saved and that we want to show them Bible-believing truth. But don't think that you can stick around here for years and become one of us. This will not happen. You're either in or you're out. This happens with all kinds of people. This is not just homosexuals. This includes cultists as well. So we welcome everybody over here. But we're giving you that chance to get right with God. That's what we're hoping for. But don't think that you can stick around. Don't think that that's going to happen. But these churches, they let them stick around. Why? They don't keep tabs. They don't keep tabs. They just want to, they just want to see the seats filled up. And they don't check around their background, where they come from, who they are. And that's why you hear a lot of sexual predators in churches and a lot of problems going on. Okay. So the falling away. And then it's getting to a point where it's not just preaching, but one of the most important things is doctrine. Doctrine is definitely down the drain. This is why we believe in King James only dispensationalism. If you stick to that, it's going to filter out a lot of things concerning doctrine. So concerning doctrine wise, we know where churches are going to fall. You got to realize this. This don't come out first. It's this one. If you don't establish in this, you will fall into this. And even if you avoid this as best as you can, if you don't have the right foundation of doctrine, you're not going to you're not going to last. How many fundamentalist independent Baptist King James only churches because they're so weak on doctrine, they fell more and more into this. See, it's doctrine, because if you know what you believe is truth, you're not going to compromise in this. But if you have no knowledge of this, you're not going to see what's wrong with these. See, that's the problem. I mean, I'm not going to embarrass or mention this group that's here with us, but then they mention about John MacArthur over there. But then because they got involved into this, they realized the importance of Bible-believing truth. So because of that, that's why we can distinguish ourselves from this. And we don't have to worry about falling into this camp as long as we stick right over here. That's the thing. So the falling away. Another thing is the Antichrist. And oh boy, when you look at the Antichrist, all you have to do is look at three areas. All you have to do is look at Catholicism. Because the Antichrist, he will be a Catholic. He will be a Pope figure. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 will show it as well as the book of Daniel chapter 11. It will show that he will have a Roman connection, thus Roman Catholicism. He is known as a Syrian Jew. So then when you, so we see right here Judaism involved. He's a Jew as well as Syrian. So we see Islam. He's going to be Muslim. So these are the three world's largest religions. By combining with these three, and paying attention to these three movements, then you know we're almost there at the end. Islam, the world's fastest growing religion. You study conspiracies, you will see a Jew involved somewhere concerning the elites. Look at Hollywood. 
Look at the banks, etc., etc., etc. Look at Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is the world's largest religion. And as you pay attention to what's going on at the Vatican, then you realize we're getting there. Look what the Vatican does with Israel. Look what the Pope does in condoning homosexual, uh, in being more tolerant toward homosexuals. Look at the Vatican where the Pope gives a statement concerning aliens. See, just pay attention to the Vatican and then you'll know we're really close. When you look up end time sources, it's going to cover all of this. Then you know we're really close. Another thing is concerning Matthew chapter 24. So we can turn over there, Matthew chapter 24. Is Israel, you pay attention to Israel. As you pay attention to Israel, then you know that we're very close to the end. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 24, and we will read verse 32. Matthew chapter 24. We will read verse 32. Pay attention to Israel. That's why the, the conflict going on with Israel and the Muslims, Palestinians, etc. As you pay attention to that, you know more and more that we're getting very close to the second advent and tribulation timeline. Just pay attention to Israel. The Bible says right here, Now learn a parable of the fig tree when its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So this fig tree is representing Israel. And when it's putting forth fig leaves, that's supposed to represent its restoration as a nation. So Israel has been, it has been gathered as a nation back at the 1940s. So we know then that his second advent is not far because keep reading, verse 33. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So this generation, from Israel's restoration when they became a nation, they will live to see the second advent. So we see that it's not far. So a lot of people pay attention to Israel. They see especially concerning its treaty. They see especially concerning its war conflicts. They see concerning... Israel concerning its interactions with the Vatican. They especially look at the temple because they're waiting for that temple, that third temple to be rebuilt. So when you pay attention to Israel, we can see that we're getting very, very close. That's why when you look up any end time sources, it's going to cover all these major areas. Another area is concerning Daniel chapter 12. We'll look at Daniel chapter 12. So why are you speaking all these things, preacher? Because I want you to pay attention to these things here. You listen to the news all the time. So as you listen to the news, and not only that, you look at the world around you, just keep paying attention. When you do that, then you know we're getting there. We're getting there. One more thing I want to add concerning the falling away is that this falling away is referring to not just churches, but it's referring to everything in our world. So as we look at our world around us, pay attention to the growth of sin. So when you look at the growth of sin, all you have to do is very simple. Just look at the United States of America, our government. What are they debating about in the hearings? What laws they want to pass? And you know we're getting there. That's the falling away. Pay attention to the schools. See what kind of professors are teaching their, uh, their garbage to children at younger and younger ages now. Pay attention to the schools. See, it's a falling away. Here's the biggest one, and this will include every single Christian out there. You ready for this? You think I get hard on churches, but this is even more hard that you're going to get convicted in. It's your home. If you fail as a father, you fail as a mother, you fail as a wife, you fail as a husband, that's your fault. 
You can't blame God. You can't blame the pastor. You can't blame the brethren. It's your fault. Because a home is under your responsibility. I ain't, I'm not in charge of your home. All right? I got my home to take care of. I'm not taking charge of your home. That's your home. So everything that goes on in the home is you got to look at yourself and see, how am I raising this family right? How am I taking care of my husband, my wife? How am I running the home? You got to realize this. This is the most powerful factor, even more, sometimes even stronger than churches. That's why some people are harping on house churches because they realize how powerful homes are. You might say, why are homes more powerful? Because you're born and raised in it. And that influences your thinking. Do you see why these two are chasing after this? Taking away freedom from that? That's right. Because this is very powerful. That's why these two are trying to take over it. And that's why children, if they're not raised properly under their parents, and if the husband and the wife don't have that foundation in the Lord, then what's going to happen? These two are going to influence it. So that's why it is so important to understand that the falling away is contributed. I believe all of it is right here. It's not just churches, but more particularly homes. What's the evidence? The evidence is me. How did I come out like this? True, I have good churches, but it's more than that. I had a home. Okay, my parents made me, uh, they had me abstain from whatever the world out there. I did not have a lot of friends. I was mostly by myself. And then boo-hoo to me, I can, cry, I can cry a flood of tears. Come on, come on. I lost all the joys of life and out in the world. But hey, I think I came out, I came out hey, right hey, and I prefer hey, that. Lord. I prefer coming out right than coming out wrong, enjoying yeah. the world. That's right. So that's why homes are extremely important. So I hope that this church, why is it that you have to get right with God right now? If you don't get right with God right now, don't expect that uh, you're not going to contribute to this. There's, if you're already a family person, your home is already broken then, if you're not right with God. If you're a single person, you're fortunate. You better get right with God before, it come, before you have a broken home. That is extremely important to understand. Maybe that's why it is the Lord's mercy where I'm still uh, the pastor by myself today. Why? Because he's trying to hone me for something. That's good. But see, people are in a rush. Yep. People are fleshy. I hope you understand this. All right, Daniel chapter 12 now. Another thing that contributes to this. So look at all the world around. Is this opening your eyes a little bit more on how Satan controlled our world? And we heard a little bit from our testimony today, those unconscious attacks from Satan that we're not aware of. But looking at all of this can make you seem more aware now of his devices, of what he's going to do to attack us. Do you see this going on in churches? Do you see this going on in your homes, your school, the government, uh, the world around you? Just look at it. Daniel chapter 12. Another thing to keep an eye out on. That way we know that we're very close to the end times. Verse 4. But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Colon. What's going to happen in the time of the end? Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Ah, those are the two things. So we see right here two main things of what Satan's going to do in the last days. It's technology and education. As we progress more in education and technology, we progress more into the devil's system. You might say, why? Well, we're not going to turn there for time's sake, but Daniel 12 is very appropriate with 2 Timothy. Uh, is it 1 Timothy? I, now i got to look up. It's 1 Timothy 4, I believe, not 2. It's 1 Timothy 4. Yeah, so if you look at 1 Timothy, no, it's 2 Timothy, actually. So it'll be 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3. As you look at 2 Timothy 3, it says that knowledge shall be increased, but knowledge of the truth will decrease. That's what it shows over there in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Not only that, 2 Timothy 3 shows you the signs of the last days. It's all about falling away. It'll give a list of sins. Now, pay attention to the world around you as we get more advanced, as we have a cell phone down to a watch, and God forbid, now you're going to put it right over here for the Mark of the Beast system. Now we're getting into a technology where you can instantly get things like that. 
Technology where they're keeping an eye on you and they hear what you're saying in your homes. And this is not just government, but even private companies as well. The power, the power that they're having where they're keeping an eye on you, where you can't escape if they want to find you. Technology increasing, but also, uh, especially this technology where it's getting more scary, where virtual world becomes more reality and reality becomes more a virtual world. People are trying to get inside this Google thing and then try to immerse themselves in the virtual world. And they're trying to take that virtual world in a realistic world where you can have more ease of driving now because they're bringing virtu virtual world into reality. So uh, people are even marrying their avatars and we uh, right. weird stuff. Yeah. It's just messed up. Technology. Education. We're progressing more in education but then your morality decreases even more because you get educated out of the Bible. That's your, that's your problem right there. So then we see, just look at the world around you. Now do you see a little bit more of Satan's devices? Oh, yeah.